How's it going, my bakers? Hope you're on a fantastic day so far. Welcome to another episode of The Principles of Baking. In today's video, I'll compare milk against buttermilk, yogurt, and sour cream, with some quite surprising results. So let's go to the kitchen and see what's up. This is not the first milk video on the channel. Previously, I compared milk against milk powder and plant milk. And you should definitely watch that video too, because these two videos go hand in hand. After I made the first video, people have been requesting videos about yogurt and buttermilk, both quite common ingredients in bread making. And I decided to add another one, sour cream. After all, I am Eastern European, and my blood is pretty much made out of sour cream. We eat this stuff with everything, and I thought it would make for an interesting comparison. So we'll make four breads today, one with milk, one with buttermilk, one with yogurt, and one with sour cream. And we'll find out how these ingredients affect the dough and the final loaf of bread. But before we start converting recipes, we need to get some facts straight. You can't simply swap the water for any other liquid. It is important to know the water content of that liquid. For instance, milk and buttermilk are only made up of 90% water. Yogurt contains about 88% water, and the sour cream can be as low as 74% or less. The fat content is also important. Milk is usually between 1 to 2%, but it can also be lower or higher. Buttermilk is quite lean at only half a percent of fat. The yogurt that I used today was about 4% fat, and the sour cream had a fat content of 18%. I chose a target hydration of 68% for this recipe, and I used 140 grams of flour. 68% of 140 is 95, and that is 95 grams of water. To calculate the amount of each ingredient needed, we must divide the water content in the base recipe by the water content percentage of each ingredient. So for the milk, we divide 95 by 90%, which is 105 grams. Buttermilk, of course, is the same. For the yogurt, we must divide it by 88%, which equals 108 grams. And for the sour cream, it's 95 divided by 74%, which equals 128 grams. These calculations work with any other liquid that you decide to use. The same goes for vegetable or fruit purees. All you need to know is the water content percentage of that ingredient. Okay, so here we have the four sets of ingredients for our four loaves, with equal amounts of flour, salt and yeast, and various amounts of milk, buttermilk, yogurt and sour cream. I will keep them in the same order from left to right throughout the video. Of course, calculating ingredients is one thing. We did find out how much water is contained in each ingredient, and then we worked out the amount that we needed. But there's of course one more thing to consider. How does this particular ingredient affect the dough? For example, the fat content of the sour cream. It'll make the dough looser and stretchier, and the resulting bread softer. The slightly higher sugar content in the milk and the buttermilk. It'll make the bread sweeter and the crust darker. So let's say you have a recipe which contains milk, but you want to swap it for sour cream, and if that recipe also contains butter for instance, then you may want to reduce the amount of butter in the original recipe to compensate for the high fat content in the sour cream. But another extremely important thing to consider is the acidity or alkalinity of each ingredient. Up to a certain point, more acidity can greatly increase the hydration capacity of gluten. Basically, the more acidic the dough, the more water it can take. On the other hand, the more alkaline the dough is, the less water it can take, the stickier it will be, and the looser it will be. Milk has a pH of around 7, while the buttermilk, yogurt, and sour cream have a pH of around 4.5. So the milk is more alkaline, the other three ingredients are more acidic. And we can see a clear difference here. The milk dough is loose and sticky, whilst the other three are nice and firm and tight. And this is where you should make another choice before you start weighing out your ingredients. Is a tighter dough more desirable, or is it going to ruin your recipe? The advantage of a tighter dough is that it can take more fermentation, it can trap more gas inside it more effectively, and it can result in a taller loaf. On the other hand, a looser dough will make a bread with a more open crumb, and the more liquid you use, the longer your bread will keep fresh after baking. The result is in your hands, you can adjust the recipe to your liking, and what I have explained up until now should take out the guesswork. I decided to not adjust the hydration, because I wanted to see how big of a difference there would be. And of course I wanted you to see it too. But it was quite remarkable how much more tighter the other three doughs were. At first, I thought I had made a mistake weighing out my ingredients. I was sure I added too much milk. After mixing all four of these doughs, I quickly weighed out a few more ingredients and mixed up another batch of the milk dough. And of course after mixing that, it still had the same texture. I would say that you could easily increase the hydration by about 5% to have the same texture in the buttermilk, yogurt and sour cream dough. Okay, back to the recipe real quick. The dough was left to bulk ferment, with one fold halfway through, then it was pre-shaped, rested, and now we're doing the final shaping. The milk dough was so stretchy and loose that I actually had to use a different shaping technique. This is the stitching method, and it works great for high hydration dough, or just a loose dough for that matter. And all the steps like folding, pre-shaping and final shaping, 
can be used to increase tension in the dough, which the other three doughs definitely didn't need. So as you can see, I'm using a basic shaping technique without too many folds in it. If you are new to baking and you're interested in shaping, check out the Steps of Baking playlist. It not only contains a shaping video, but it has videos explaining every single step of the baking process. And of course, don't forget the Principles of Baking playlist. You'll find 50 videos there, all about ingredients and their effects on dough, and all about techniques and methods to make you a better baker. Okay, final shaping done. Let's leave the dough for the final proof. And of course, as I said in the beginning, it's all still in the same order. Milk, buttermilk, yogurt, sour cream, from left to right. Okay, clearly the milk and the sour cream doughs are risen first. So we'll get them in the oven, let the other two proof for a little bit longer. But 30 minutes later, these bad boys are ready for the oven too. You may ask yourself, why did the other two puff up sooner? Of course the milk dough was loose and stretchy, so it had a much easier time expanding. And whilst the other three had all the same tightness, the sour cream contained a lot of fat, which made the dough softer, looser, and it had an easier time expanding as it was fermenting. And this is also where you can come in and start playing with the recipes. You don't necessarily have to increase the hydration of the more acidic loaves. You can add some fat to the recipe, like butter perhaps, or even an egg yolk, which will make the dough puff up even better. Many bread making techniques and methods work best when you combine them with other methods and other ingredients. Okay, but let's get back to comparing. Looking at them from the outside, clearly the milk and the buttermilk loaves have the brownest crust, whilst the yogurt loaf looks quite dull. And whilst the sour cream is not too brown, it does have a beautiful shine to it. Now the color can be explained by the sugar content of each ingredient. Milk and buttermilk have around 5% sugar, whilst yogurt and sour cream have around 4% sugar. The more sugar there is in the recipe, the browner the crust. Giving them a squeeze and comparing the texture, there are some differences. The milk bread's very soft and light, and you can see it has gained more volume. It has a slightly more open crumb. The buttermilk and yogurt breads are slightly tighter, slightly tougher, whilst the sour cream has a very similar texture to the milk. It is very light, soft and springy, and it tears open so easily without resisting at all. And that is thanks to all the fat. Tasting them, I could feel clear progression. The milk bread has a nice sweetness to it. It's like bread made with water, but enhanced. The buttermilk bread had a slightly more sour flavor, predictably, and the yogurt did too. But at the same time, they had a nice sweetness to them too. When it came to the sour cream loaf, it was a clear winner for me. It had the richest taste, the best mouth feel, it was sweet, soft, slightly acidic, but it was well-rounded and mellow, and I might just use it more often from now on. To be honest, I was quite surprised at these results. So which of these ingredients have you used in bread making? Did you know about the tightening effect that acidity has on gluten structure? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.